the River City Knits podcast. I'm Elisa. This is Enid. And we have a special guest today. My name is Roy. Hey, we're so Hi. Excited. Hello. Hi, Roy. <laughs> so Amanda can't be with us this weekend, and we have realized we have not recorded at all the entire month of January. Yeah. And it's a long month. So we said, okay, we're going to do this. But then we asked Roy to join us, and he so very kindly and graciously said yes. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Yay. I've been a big fan of the yarn barn and of these two ladies who have taught me over the years how to knit. So I'm very happy to be here today. Yeah. So happy 2018. <laughs> we have sparkling wine, but it's off camera. <laughs> January kicked our butt, I guess. Yeah. Well, there was an ice storm in oh, San Antonio. Ice apocalypse. Literally, the city just fell apart and shut down and it was perfect weather for knitting and for crocheting yes and just to kind of tuck under the covers and mm. and rest <laughs> oh it's so true it was it's been kind of nice because i last year was my year of knitting socks and i was like oh i have socks to wear oh i've got mittens to wear or you know fingerless gloves and i have stuff it's not you know for like three days we got to use it <laughs> yeah. and for those late starters like me i uh, am still finishing a pair of socks that i started this summer um, I was in Annapolis, uh, Maryland this summer visiting some friends in DC and I came across this nice uh, skein of, of yarn. I think it was called, um, oh goodness, I can't remember, but it was a cute shop in Annapolis, Maryland and I finished one uh, one leg or one, one, one foot. foot. <laughs> He's got big feet. And so this is the second pair of yarn or second pair of um, socks that I've actually made. Alyssa and Enid have both inspired me because um, they're always knitting. All kinds of things especially socks so i hope to enjoy these this winter and uh and, and catch up with you two who yeah. are always knitting so socks. you so you did one whole sock and then so you have this still remaining in your where are you so i've just finished the cuff here and so it's uh it's the vanilla latte um, it's my favorite yes i know and so uh that's actually the first pair that i that i um that I knitted that you helped me with mm -hmm. and so it's a very easy um, it's a very easy knit and so I just finished the cuff here which is two knits and two pearls and you do it for as as long as you want and so I did this for about maybe two and a half inches mm -hmm. just because I'm a taller guy and I yeah. need more uh, I need more, um, more foot. Uh, yeah more leg. more leg and so now I've gotten to the part where I am now uh, designing the pattern mm -hmm. for the entire leg um, until I get to my ankle. So um, this here was about maybe two hours that I did during lunch at work and then in the mornings before I go to work. Um, so I've gotten pretty, uh, I've gotten, I've gotten a lot done, I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. given that this is the second pair of, of socks that I've knitted. <laughs> yes. So it's I'm a happy fun... to share. You know, I, I've just cast on another pair of socks. I'm working on my starting point, and I'm also finishing up my lentilla shawl um, that Shelly from um, one of our previous episodes kind of inspired me to, to knit up. And, um, but I kind of, that sock, I just, it's almost like a meditation for me. Mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of realized, because I had, I'd finished some socks and I hadn't casted on any new ones. In fact, I was making mitts and doing some other things. Um, so this afternoon, I had a work event, so I, I started <laughs> literally at the event. I had some downtime for about 15 minutes, and so I cast it on. So how many socks in progress do you have? So right now, I have this one, and then I have my Christmas Eve cast on yeah. pair of socks, which is um, the Fairy Lights <laughs> sock pattern. Mm. And so that one's a little bit different because it's not my meditative uh, vanilla latte where I can just kind of right. knit without thinking. That one, since there's a really cool, really cool textured pattern, I, ha I have to read just like I would with any of my other patterns. You haven't gotten it them down yet. No, I'm only like 15 rows in, so I'm not, It's I'm still learning the pattern. So I will say for my lentilla shawl, I was really excited because usually it takes me a long time to feel confident that I have the pattern in my head. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say like not even an inch in, I had the pattern. Oh, so man. that was a really, I was really proud of myself because that's something that I struggle with. And I know so many people are like, oh no, they look at it and then just intuit intuitively can figure it out. And we'll do a still shot of this, but I'm at the part where it's eating up the pieces so the ruffles really cute and um, I used a size six needle and I think the 
the uh, pattern calls for a smaller size, but I knit tight. So for the most mm. part, is this just uh, uh, it's knit? Nice. It's um, mm -hmm. it's knit, very few pearls, and it's short rows. That. That's so yeah, pretty. That it is. is. Nice. It's really feminine. I think that's why I really like it. So um, this all gets to get minimized. And it, I kind of did some math, and it looks like a I de I'm decreasing some of the decreasing part. Every ruffle, every little ruffle ridge is a decrease of five stitches. So, huh. so it'll be. Is it gonna? S it'll taper off to match that end over there. Oh, cool. And so you began this on Christmas Eve, or this when did one? you start this? Oh my gosh, when did I start it? I started it after Christmas. After Christmas, okay. I started it after wow, Christmas. Wow, that's a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. But it's real. It was a real like once you do again like once it's, I memorized it mm -hmm. and then I was just just knitting. So and how many you, cast ons did you did you have to start off with with that project there? It was six stitch cast ons. Six stitch cast. Mm -hmm. And then you just knit front and back and you kind of make it grow. Oh, wow. So it's really it's really kind of cool. So less than ten and. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun knit, and I just, I love the yarn. It's from Night Owl Fibers, which I've mentioned before, and it was her December exclusive colorway, which is the Ghost of Christmas Past. So, so let me ask you a question, or both of you a question, mm -hmm. for a project, for a beginner, because I know that sometimes I'm intimidated when um, I have to, uh, when I have a pattern that I have to start off with six stitches, and then mm -hmm. it grows. Um, I'm used to just casting on 180 stitches, mm -hmm. and I'm making a scarf or another right. project. So what would you say is, what advice would you give a beginner? And I know that most of, most of the folks watching this are not beginners, but. No, I mean, there are some beginners. And I also think we all learn new things. I mean, Amanda, who's been knitting forever, learned how to magic loop just a couple of years ago. And mm -hmm. that was like game changer for her with socks <laughs> and other projects. My, my feeling, especially when you start off with a small, like the little tabby type um, projects, is using a progress keeper to show which is the right side and the wrong side because you're just starting with just a few stitches and you get confused which way's which and if the you're pattern talking about that little gadget that says one two three no four. just a little like so a, a class marker. like a oh, stitch, stitch marker, marker. okay yeah. the stitch marker that has a little safety pin on it got it because that'll just kind of like okay this is the right <laughs> side because i've gotten in fact even with this one i got confused which way was which and depending on which side you're on the pattern changes, changes. so in fact, I did one. I had the ruffles were at this end, but then like the last two ruffles were on the wrong side, and I said, "Okay, we gotta, we gotta tink that back." So you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because on this sock, I got a little confused. I actually had it inside out, and so oh. your your work is supposed to be on your right side as you're knitting. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be in your right. And when I was doing that la uh, a couple of days ago, my sock was um, inside out, and so I knew something was was odd mm -hmm. and so I think um, something that maybe possibly we should explore for another episode is the do's and don'ts for maybe beginners because I've been knitting for about five years or more than five years and I got a little confused you've been knitting for a long time <laughs> yeah you've been knitting a lot longer even longer than I have I think so. well since 2009 yeah, I just, mm -hmm. so this, actually this past week's my six year anniversary knitting. I oh, had a Facebook memory come up where I was excited about purling. So, and I knew I learned to knit and purl the same week. So <laughs> that's really that's just kind of cool. It is. It's really, really kind of cool. So, um, especially just thinking, oh, you know, this is all I know, knitting and purling and then what, what we do now. So with all the different things, I actually, all the variations. I actually learned how to perfect my knitting and crocheting here at the Yarn Barn. Um, back in 2010 so it's been eight years now wow yeah, eight years here at the Yarnborn. that's cool that is really really cool so is there you've will you what have you been up to with your knitting Enid <laughs> what have I been knitting yes <laughs> <laughs> too many things too many things so many things we can't even so, discuss them today this hat I started because I'm a sucker and I can't say no Oh, that's nice. So nice color. It's a beautiful color. This uh, customer came in and wanted a hat for her granddaughter, and I was like, I'll show you. She tried. She came back a week later. Please help me. And it, she said, I'll pay you to knit it for me. I'm like, no, nah, I don't do that. So what can I say now? So what kind of yarn is that? It's a Barocco Comfort, and it's just a straight-up, um, ribbing two by two, but 
this is what happens when you try to like improvise and do your own decreasing. It looks fugly. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to take it all that out. That means freaking ugly. Yeah, it means so <laughs> I ugly. laugh because she's asked, she's like, when you decrease, you decrease and then knit the next row. <clears throat> well, I just did a bulky hat and it was every row was a decrease, so it's a very flat head. But I want this more of a slope. Especially because it's a girl. But it's a lot of stitches. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do two decreases and do like, what is this? One, two, three, four wedges. But it's just not looking right. It looks really sloppy and ugly. So tonight, I'm going to have a little tink party and just tink it all the way back until I can start decreasing again. Maybe throw <clears throat> some more rows in there. Well, but, you know, when I first made a hat, let me look at that just real quickly whenever i've often found that if you think it looks a little sloppy and and if you want to improvise mm -hmm. i think you can start by by closing it in and then any excess that you have you can kind of roll it up roll up the hat roll up the hat on the front it's the decreases that look ugly oh i see it's not the actual i want, I want the decreases Got to it. look natural even though it's ribbing i think yeah. it's hard to make them look like natural i think with hats because um when i lived in the midwest um it was often it was always very nice to have big snuggly hats where you can kind of roll it up in the front mm -hmm. or bring it down to cover, you know, kind of warm your up right. to your forehead like your neck or up. your nose bridge um, <laughs> because it, it would get so cold and it's a nice little cozy hat. But now I see what you're saying. It looks nice, though. It's pretty. It's nice and soft. It's very soft. The Barocco Comfort's really Is that a yarn that you have here? Yes. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I love Barocco's. Nice. I'll have to check it out. Barocco Comfort. And it's real, it's like an, it's all acrylic, but it's beautiful and it's super soft and it wears like crazy. You throw it in the back of your car or throw it in your backpack and it still looks new. It takes a beating. So, yeah, it's a really nice yarn. I have a funny story about acrylic. I, uh, when I was first trying to learn how to knit, um, of course, you either learn how to knit a scarf or a dish towel. And I uh, picked out an acrylic yarn and I was, I knit a dish towel. And to, to my surprise, acrylic does not absorb <laughs> water. You're like, oh, I'll wipe this up. I oh, did. wait. And nothing happened. Uh, so uh, oh, after right. learning that acrylic does not absorb, I switched to cotton. Cotton is one of the best yarns. Uh, to that's knit what with. I that's what I learned to knit with was just regular cotton from like Michaels I think, and I just knit and purled, knit and purled because I'm a perfectionist and I wouldn't start a project until I knew exactly that I was comfortable. I'm so cautious, so and then I was very like, okay, the project is I'm gonna learn these things. I'm gonna it's not just gonna do something, and I didn't want to do just a scarf because that would be forever and infinity <clears throat> and beyond. Right. And um. Yeah, very. And then, remember that brioche triangle shawl I was working on? Yes. The triangles with the triangles inside the triangles? Yes. Oh, goodness. I know, right? I frogged it last night. What? Yes, ma'am. I frogged it. All of it. All of it? You said you were going to go, oh. I frogged it. All of it. So I'm going to do. That looks like crochet. Oh, darn it. I heard my phone. I'll put the pattern up there. It's a brand new pattern. Broken Braveheart. Do you remember? I don't remember. Darn it. I'll put this it on Doesn't look a crochet. It looks like a double crochet from afar. It's a brioche. <laughs> it's brioche with cables, and it's really, really, really pretty. I should Very have ornate. written it in some notes Very. before I started the show. But, um... Oh, wow. I see how you can think it's crochet. I can see a little bit of that. Yes. Yeah. Plus, my yarns are curly, so... Yeah, because it had been... And another thing earlier. Yeah. But it's really, it's going to be pretty. The What kind of yarn is that? This is my Barnell Yarns. Oh, nice. Yes. <clears throat> so it is one skein of um, Joy or something. This is a very nice color. Yeah. And then this one's Blue Jay. Do I have the thingy in here? No, I don't. And then this was going to be the third color in that other pattern. I'm going to have to find something else to do with it. But That's isn't this a awesome? pretty fun color. That's yours also? This is ours also, yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know you all did the... Scott did this like cool. just by itself. And then he did um, he did an atomic thistle where he gradiented in half the skein. I remember atomic thistle. It was half gradient. Yes. And then the other half was this. And so pretty. 
I have not seen it knitted up yet. I'd love to see that one knitted up. I remember that, yeah. Atomic Thistle. Her husband has a lot of fun coming up with the names, yeah. I think, of the, <laughs> of the yarns. He has a lot of fun dying. We haven't died in a while. A lot of changes going on this last couple months, but it'll pick up soon again. Oh, yeah. For what sure. else? My chick pulley, I'm doing progress on that. I've already, I've got the sleeves separated. I've knitted halfway. I didn't bring it with me. I think it's over there. But that's, that's almost, I'm working on the bottom half of the sweater. You've been really busy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, throughout the month of, throughout the month of January, mm -hmm. what do most people buy here? Hmm. It's like your alpacas. Well, right now, I think, you know, with the ice apocalypse. <laughs> With Ice Apocalypse 20, Snowmageddon. 20, Snowmageddon 2018, um, people kind of come in um, and, you know, buy the cozy stuff, the <clears> bulky <throat> stuff, just because they want to do something cozy and... And quick. And quick. Yeah. Because it's supposed to get cold again or no? We're supposed to get some more some more fronts. Oh, really? But... So but disclaimer. Let's talk about Ice Apocalypse. Go so, ahead. Yeah, but disclaimer. Like, we're South Texas. This Like, it's not like you guys in Frozen Tundras... Like people who lived in Minnesota, where it's just it's just cold, forever. Like we'll get. I mean, it's like seventy two and like incredibly humid right now. So, but we'll get down, you know, into the thirties in a few days, and we freak out and and yeah. Did you want to talk about ice apocalypse? Yeah, where were you? <laughs> I was up in D.C. I was visiting my sister during the Martin Luther King Day weekend. I took uh, an extra day off. So the, the ice storm came in on that Tuesday after Martin Luther King Day, and um, the city had shut down, and I was kind of nervous that uh, my flight wouldn't come in because I was going to come in around 8.30 at night. Oh, goodness. I know, and I was just like, does, does the airport have the capacity? Do they have the DIC? Like, what's mm, going yeah. on? I'm watching on social media, all, like family and friends freaking out. And I learned, like, I've knit so many hats, but I don't own a hat of my own. <laughs> That's usually because the case. I give them out as gifts, and you know, like you're talking about fast, cozy knits that are big, chunky yarns. I mean, I did two hats like in a couple of days for my dad and my niece, you know, mm -hmm. right before Christmas, and um, so I was up there where it's like legit cold up in DC, and um, I didn't have a hat. <laughs> Oh no. So I'm, that's I need to work on a hat. And I probably like when I know it's going to get cold I'm like okay I need to start on a hat. I realized I didn't make enough socks for myself. You know, at least it's like a little squirrel and she's like got all these little nuts put away and they're all socks. <laughs> my 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 nut socks. Sock I nut. just was that sounds like, gross. No, never mind. <laughs> my... <laughs> and I'm knitting. <laughs> well, I'll I'll say that um during Lucky our very cold. during our wintry days um Right before we, we got that bad weather, I kind of ran some errands so that I wouldn't have to go out in that kind of weather. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in and just kind of worked on my... I finished up that, that oh, sock. Oh, nice. And um, I'm also working on a baby blanket that, I, that I'm crocheting. And so um, it was just nice to kind of relax and know that you can't go anywhere and, and, and just stay in and knit. Unless um, you have to pick up your friend who flies in from D.C. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Well, and I will say that <laughs> on New Year's Eve... Um, we hosted a party in downtown, and um, I had a lot of uh, little hats and scarves that I had knitted, and I used one of the hats, but I'll tell you, it was just so frigid that my little hat that I knitted out of alpaca was not enough. Not enough. <laughs> like, I need more. I needed fleece. I need more lining. <laughs> I needed a fleece-line hat. I needed a goat or Yeah, I drove in that at night, but I closed this shop down. I, but, you know, I'm not... Um, I'm not trying to look like the superhero, and I'm not trying to get in anybody's way. I'm not a first responder, so I stay it out of the road. Yep. Um, it's, it's just not. It's not safe to be. I don't. The, and I can probably drive in it. It's the nutsos that don't know how to drive. Yes. Some people in San Antonio cannot. They can't even drive in rain. <laughs> so they can't. I was fine going up. To the airport there was nobody it was just me on the highway it may be like one or two cars but we left each other alone speaking of which you know drivers you see all these kind of crazy bumper stickers everywhere have you ever seen a bumper sticker that talks about knitting or or um i, yes. know, that, I know that you've seen ssk there have been pins k talk k talk k knit k to 
together. T O G. I'm not following. <laughs> Knit two together. Oh, but it's cake tag. It. It's it. like one of the A T O G. Got it. It's Got those it. like white ovals. Well, yeah, they look like them. What I was alluding to was there was a pin that I think one of you gave me a couple of years ago that said, uh, knit, eat, sleep, repeat. Or oh, that's, that, that was effect. Amanda. She did that whole, yeah. And I feel like we need to have some sort of bumper stickers like that. Yeah, knit, you were driving. So I drove, and then on the way back, I ran into some some crazies. I almost got run off the road. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah she Luckily, my off. windows were tinted, and I was like, there was a lot of fingers going up. <laughs> was this on your way? Was this on your way to the shop? This was on my way home after dropping me off. From I dropped the airport. Lisa off oh, and picking me up from the yeah. airport. So my flight a, came in. This my, was a Monday night or Tuesday night. Tuesday. My flight came in totally fine. It was actually my flight out of DC that was delayed because there were some like airplane problems. But got into Dallas. They had already like had everything set. Luckily, my like connecting flight was two gates over, mm -hmm. and we got here. Everything we got here on time and everything. It was crazy. Let me ask you a question. Do you knit while you're on the flight? Yes. When you're on the airport I do. as well. Mm -hmm. Do you? I I've never my... seen a lot of people. I used to see some. Folks so there was another then... lady on the flight back that also was knitting. She was knitting um, a, a dog sweater for her dog. Oh, oh nice. So she had some really pretty red acrylic. She's like, oh, you've got nice yarn. She says, I'm, I'm knitting for my dog. I'm not, I'm not using nice yarn. Oh, no. <laughs> so it was really and funny. You know, the dog would be like, what's the sheep on me? I uh, know. <laughs> He'd be like, what is this animal? Well, you know, smell like a sheep. For a long time, knitting hadn't made it into, you know, pop culture or even, you know, um, uh, in media. I remember it was like in the early 2000s during an episode in Sex and the City. Mm -hmm. You had one of the characters knitting while she was waiting for for someone. Oh and wow! And then everyone started to knit. Became like and a so craze. It became a craze, or, or you know, some sort of trend. And um, I used to see, I used to travel uh, a lot for work, and I used to see a lot of women, mostly, that would be knitting. And so, wow, you don't see very many. No, you don't. Not anymore. But I mean, they're there because we know you guys, and I see lots of airport posts think, on Instagram. I yeah. think maybe. I think maybe perhaps. People may be afraid to take out some needles <laughs> and start so knitting. So I will say, um, like, I, I don't know what the rules are. So I take, I always make sure I have an actual project on my needles, not just plain needles, because I don't want them to take them away. And I've never had a problem. Um, I'll knit fine, like, at the gate, like, while I'm waiting. But, like, right before takeoff, I kind of put everything, I make sure everything's put away. And then after they do their little talk. And then... Once it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm just a rule follower, but when it's like, okay, now that... You're at 10,000 feet. Yes. You can then move I'm like, the okay, cabin. now I can take out my, my knitting needles. My project. So, um, but I love knitting I think plane. as a guy, for me, um, I have become more open to be out in public knitting. Um, but I think from a male perspective, it's always been um, a little intimidating for, for me to, you know, just get my project, show it out in public, and start knitting with a group of friends. Um, but Do you get uh, stopped? What are you doing? No, never. No one has ever approached Nobody's me. But approached I you? feel that I feel I feel like I'm that little fish in a bowl and everyone's just all eyes on me. Uh, but uh, I kind of get pretty. lost in, in sort of our conversation. For instance, when we get together on Thursday nights mm -hmm. at Panera, um, which is a friendly crowd, but I don't think I think for from a male's perspective it may be a little um, intimidating. To be honest, I can see that. There's always, you know, somebody posted um, that I follow on Instagram. She was really upset. She had like 15 minutes, like during lunch or something. She was at work, and so she was in the break room, and she's like, "I just got, you know, a few minutes, but I'm gonna knit." And she walked in, and somebody, you know, who works with her was like, "Oh, hey, Granny," and she was so angry. And it's just like, why do? You, who were these people? Why do they have to like? They like live under rocks. I always get the question, oh, knitting's not in fashion anymore. People don't knit much anymore. I'm like, open up Instagram or open up Pinterest. I well, said, I mean, they're knitting... like everywhere and some of like the really coolest people are knitters. Yeah, I would say yeah. knitting, Crocheters. there's so many ways you can look at knitting. Um, you talk about it being a gift. All your projects are always gifts. Mm -hmm. For me, I always think that it's a it's a great way to <clears throat> to find to, to to you know it's a stress reliever um, to to work on a project, pick it right up when you know you're having a bad day, yes. or Even you need for five minutes, or, or you need to calm down. 
uh, or you just want to just basically relax. Sometimes I think in, in this day and age, <clears throat> excuse me, we're so used to just picking up our tablet or our iPhones um, and, and, and looking what, what's going on in the world, but sometimes it's great to just kind of close and, and just work on something that's, that's very calming. I totally agree. So I just came, I had a work event this afternoon and um, the caterer was running late and I was concerned and we got start, you know, it's just, I mm -hmm. just, I get, it's, it's my work, right? So I take great pride in it. And so caterer got in, he got settled, he was good to go. And I took like 10 minutes right before, like it was like 20 minutes before the program ended and before the reception started. And like, I just took 10 minutes during that time to just, just, actually cast on and just do a couple of rows of the sock and I just put myself in a really it just I got in a really good space and you know at the end of our it was a recital with the reception and at the end of the recital I just felt okay refreshed and renewed and it mm -hmm. just you know I don't know if I would have felt that way had I not had something just to concentrate on and hone in on I, I agree don't you feel like do you want to share that with everybody that's around you yes and Look I want how relaxed I am yeah and just you know <laughs> I feel so good this well, is it's awesome. also a skill to to have um, it, it's something you can share with your friends I know that when I'm in the office and I recently started to take my work with me mm -hmm. and oh, that's folks awesome, will, Roy. will walk in and uh, a couple of girls um, have mentioned that they want to start a knitting club uh, and at my workplace and I said let's go for it let's do it um, so I think you can you know spread your talent and your skills with those that aren't necessarily exposed to it mm -hmm. you know so well that's how I that's learned how to knit idea. I um my co-worker so our co-worker so Pam who's now retired um had mentioned something about knitting to one of my other co-workers at the time and Andrew is like I think I want to make that as a new year's resolution to learn to knit and that was um, the year before I started, so like 2011. Okay. And I saw them, and I'm like, I wanna jealous. I want to do this, but I didn't want to like go in and like rain on their pr like Andrea had asked Pam, you know, will you help me with this? So I didn't want to be like, me too, me too. So I was like, okay, just kind of chill, <laughs> be subtle. And then I'm like, okay, this is it. I want to learn too. So, um, so yeah, that's. It's nice when you're with and during lunch, and actually my other coworker brought in her crochet. We didn't know she crocheted, but she was doing it during lunch. And then a fourth co coworker, she um, I can't. It had, she was like a weaving type thing with like really thin threads. Um, I'm not quite sure what it was, but she brought her projects in too. So it was kind of nice that we had ni this nice little craft time in the break room and what happened you still doing it so no well so andrea left and then pam retired and it just kind of broke up well we um when i first moved to san antonio um at my first job here um, there was a lady who um, saw me knitting in my office but i had my door closed during mm -hmm. lunch <laughs> You're all and so hidden. the next day she came in and um she was a crocheter and so she was crocheting and i was knitting and so we picked a day of the week. I can't remember which one, but we uh, would have lunch and would catch up on our projects. And that's where I was able to make uh, my dog, Juliet, a sweater. Oh, and aww. so um, that's where I think I had first learned or I think um, those were the first years that I had started to uh, knit with cotton. Okay. And so uh, I made her a sweater. But I encourage everybody to just take your projects out, whether how intimidating it may feel mm -hmm. uh, to share it with folks because you may inspire others to, um, you know, cross off that or check that that box on mm -hmm. that list that they have that they want to learn how to knit or crochet That's really or cool. needlepoint. You know, needlepoint is mm -hmm. another yeah. uh, is another thing that I learned how to do here at the at the yarn barn. So um, there's just so many things that you can do. Yeah, and I do that too. So I've got needlepoint projects that I'm working on, and I'm painting a couple canvases for some people. And You're really busy. I'm busy. Yeah. And I usually, this is the one I've, this is my chick pulley. Yeah, she brought it out. I brought it out. It's such a great color. Wow. We'll do some still, that we'll do some nice. still photos. I can't believe I've, of our projects. on this far, but there we go. So There's this is the one that sleeves. Ina had talked about go. her customer asked her to do the knit along with her yes so is this a blouse or it's a, it's a sweater it'll be sweater. three quarter sleeve little sweater see so from a beginner's um, you know lens or perspective this is very intimidating i agree so are these panels that 
then you stitch together? No, it's raglan. The style's raglan, so by some increases here. Oh, I got a little boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> right here. This is an increase, so you're increasing both sides. And you're increasing here creates the sleeve. Isn't that amazing? Shoulder. This looks so. I like the color. The color's the color gorgeous. Is great. So it's, just one so it's piece. looks. It has like some aqua, maybe some blue turquoise. This is great. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. This is oh, nice. Green, and so then I put the you put the sleeves on folders, and then you pick up under here. You create some stitches under here, and then you create the bottom. So the whole thing's knit in one piece. Wow. And after you do that, you come back, pick up these stitches, and finish the sleeves. And then this is the part that's a little tricky, is the collar. So you'll be picking up along the edges and doing this really pretty lacy rib collar. And then that's it. Wow. So one, in, in the makeup piece. room, Alyssa and I were talking about um, <laughs> about AKA washing. What champagne is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about washing, you know, your knits or your crochets. Um, do you wash this or do you send it out to be dry clean? And if you no, wash it at home, it. do you, you just let it air dry? No, you wash it with the, I guess, according to the label. So each yarn label will say how to, ma yeah, maintain, how to maintain, the maintain the product. Got it. Okay. So I would just. That's something that I'm also very it. cognizant of. With my first pair of socks, I washed them, but I let them air dry for about two days. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I'm the same way. I. I put I put some socks in, but like in a little lingerie bag when I was washing some delicates. Mm -hmm. But I usually just soak them in a bowl just to like your socks, my socks. Yeah, I'm just kind of I don't want I don't rub them, but I just kind of like just wash them that way, like as if I was gonna block them. I abuse the hell out of my socks. Um, and do you find scared. that do you find that the longevity of your socks? But I can. But I just started knitting them last year, so I can't tell you. But I can oh, really? I thought you've been knitting socks for a lot longer than that. I know well, you've been knitting socks for others. But. Yeah, I have. I have been knitting more socks, but I feel like last year was when I really was I was knitting for myself because I've knit a lot of socks for my nephew. So so mustache yarns, yarns they take them. They take yeah, and they're they're, they're pretty to durable. be yeah, they're to be used for that. So I've thrown my Valentine's Day socks. All our sleds and washing machine has them. So yeah, maybe I take the life out of them a little bit, but they still look great. And they Good. feel great. They feel great. I'm missing a sock, so I think my washing machine ate it. <laughs> or it's it's somewhere. Somewhere. It just needs to be found. So not only did I not knit enough socks for myself, but I lost one of the two pairs I have. Oh no. <laughs> I eat it. That's horrible. No, one of each two pair I have three pairs of socks. And I've lost one of each. Oh my gosh. I have one full pair and then I've lost one. But but one's like Manish gray and the other one's like yes does all colors so I can't wear those together and then you'll like cuff up your jeans I'll stand up sideways check them out check them out so uh, <laughs> speaking of sock yarn we have a contest going on and um, it is for a skein of night owl fibers um, and it's a va valentine colorway and we've asked you to um, send us your knitting goals we have a page on Ravelry that uh, you can kind of put it on I know Amanda set it up so we've got quite a few responses mm -hmm. but we still have some time we'll probably do it till the end of the month so please share with us what your knitting goals are there have been some really amazing ones they're like everybody has them there's a few people who have them very organized one two three and other people you know it could be learning a new project trying out a new yarn doing a new stitch so we definitely want to keep seeing those because it's really inspiring I know Enid and Amanda have done some pretty amazing double knitting. Double knitting. With where they let their nerdy, geeky freak flag fly. I'm really behind on my double knitting. I got so excited about it, but Amanda's been doing stuff with it. So. Amanda like re dyed she dyed some new yarn. I think you showed me the double knitting back in December, didn't mm -hmm. you? I think so. No, it's I think you were practicing Jan January. Yeah, was it January. Practicing. Okay, you were practicing it before. She was like totally in it to win it, like before the start of the year, because she was like she had like practice swatches. She was swatching and everything. Swatching. So, um, so I'm behind. So yeah, so it's a it's a Valentine's Day colorway from Night Owl Fibers, and uh, so please go onto our Ravelry group, which is River City Knits, and uh, check it out and share with us what your knitting goals are. And thanks to all of you who have already posted those. Um, we we love them. It's it's 
it's really inspiring. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's February. That's February. And that's Night Owl Fibers. And then we have March. We've already got something lined up for March. So do you want to share a little bit about it? My sweet, sweet friends in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where, where the, the wind, wind comes in down the flame. Okay, where the raging wind <laughs> sure smells sweet. I have never sweet. seen <gasps> what? the play. Okay, L-A-H-O-M-A, Oklahoma, okay. <laughs> Leon Alexander, great, fabulous yarn. Logan has sent us some goodies. And Elisa and I haven't opened ours yet, so I got some little scissors out. And there's something for Amanda also, but well, we won't. He sent, yeah, he sent us each one. Yes. And with this, he's also said he is going to. We should have pre packed open these. Okay. I know. You want some? Yes, please. Want Thank some you. needle scissors? Some scissors? Yes, please. He also said he was going to give away one month from his. For the March colorway. March colorway. Oh my God! So, Le- Look, Le- Leon Alexander. I need a light to shine. Ah. So Leon Alexander has <laughs> been doing a um, a monthly special colorway, just like um, wow. um. <laughs> so he's been doing a special monthly colorway. So he has gifted us the January colorway. That's very nice. You ready? I don't know what it's called. What did he, did he say? What it's called? It's gorgeous. Oh my God! It's gosh. In February. Okay, y'all. Oh my god, I'm gonna start to cry. It's awesome, isn't it? He said, I'm gonna read the letter. Because he wrote a letter. He says, I hope you enjoy this colorway. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. This is for all the badass women in the world. Hope Look. this brings you joy. I'm sure we will see you soon, guys. Love, Logan. Oh, wow. Enid, happy 2018. Hope this kicks off your year right. And all three of you are getting a single ply skein. Maybe you can do a group project or a knit along. Love you. See you soon, Logan. Love you, Logan. Love you, Logan. And I think doing a knit along would be really cool. I'm sure we can find I got a fan- some purple. Fantastic so one skein project. This says leonalexanderyarns.com. Yes. Tell me more about, about, about him. So he is a fantastic dyer. He actually had a. Um, what is it called here at oh, the shop wow. during Yarn Crawl? They have great marketing. I love. He had a trunk show. That's what the word is. Trunk show. I'm the nerd who has glasses on top of glasses because then I couldn't see. So I'm going to take off my glasses. So his knitting shop is in Oklahoma City. Well, his, he's, he's a dyer. He's an independent dyer. dyer. Got it. Yes. So like Amanda. So he doesn't have a, a brick and mortar, but he he works with a lot of um, wonderful like different shops. So he gave us some really cool stuff. We that's have nice. a hey. awesome. This is single ply. Yes, that's what he said. It's single ply. It's not sock. So we have to find a one skein single ply project. Is that a oh, bumper okay. sticker? It is. is that what we're I think about? it's gonna but... go on my cup. I usually. <gasps> okay, so we're not doing it along with the same stuff. Unless you know what? I'm gonna buy some atomic. Como se llama? Plus, I'm sold out of atomic. What? Dear Scott, <laughs> please dye me some more. Could you please dye me some more of the atomic dynamite? What is called? What is it called? Thistle. No. This atomic thistle. thistle. This is no. just the, the dynamite. Uh, key lime craze. Key lime craze. Sincerely, Elisa. So. I need a C. Oh my gosh! This is Logan. Thank you so much. Yes. You and Jose are the best. We love you guys. We love you so much. And we can't wait till we see you again, either here in San Antonio or somewhere else. Who knows? So we're going to figure something out awesome to do. Yeah, we'll do something together. So this is the January colorway, everybody. There's lots of love going on right now. And um, what Logan has graciously offered is for us to do a giveaway in March for his March colorway of the month. So that's still a surprise. So that's really exciting. Yes, I'm wearing mine. And um, I can't see, but I'll wear We'll be able to post colors once we get more information on that. So I have to take these off so I can put on my regular glasses, but I really like them. So I'm going to put them like this. Or do you want to wear them, Roy? Uh, sure, I'll try them on. Because it's got his, it has his logo on them. Leon. Leon Alexander. Leon Alexander. Oh, this is very cool. They're really, really cool. <laughs> but you can actually see, because I'm just like, there's a bunch of blurry and stuff. And he has a website that I'd like to go on, too. Yes. It's uh, 
www.leonalexanderyarns.com. Very, very cool. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just mean, pick that up. It's for you. Thank you. So, um, we'll have to think of a, a cool prompt for you guys for March. So that way we can figure out. Okay. Thank you. Um, something, something fun. Something awesome. So now I'm getting off already. So uh, we're at 20 minutes now, Enid. Woohoo! Well, does that wrap it up for today? I think so. Do you want to stop it and then start it or just keep going? We just keep going. Okay, cool. So that's the end of that stuff for our giveaway. So we do hope that you participate and we'll be following up. And um, thanks for joining us. I know, oh, hi. We're so glad you're, you're welcome. here. Thank you. This thanks is a lot for of fun. We miss Amanda. Amanda, we, we miss, miss you. Amanda. We miss you, Amanda. She's got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Yeah. And um, happy birthday, Miss Molly. I know Molly's ten. Ten. She's, oh my goodness. She's two digits now. She's celebrating her birthday month. Yes. Her birthday week. Birthday week. I have to sneeze. I'm sorry. <gasps> my birthday's next week. <gasps> Is it next week? Yes, really? February first, and so I. Oh my goodness! Holy I remember cow. when we celebrated that last <laughs> year. <laughs> yeah, over at the cove. Yeah. So I haven't decided what I want to do yet. I'm turning forty-four. What happened to everything? Forty-four so, is a new twenty-two. That's right. It's the, it's like twenty-two <laughs> times. Wait, you're turning forty-four? Yeah. That means I'm forty-four also. Yeah, you'll be forty-five in August. What? I've been 43 for a little while. Yeah, we'll just say we're 43. So I'm actually really excited because I have, I'm going to do a birthday cast on um, with some sock yarn. And it's um, from um, Mafi and the Squid that I'll be doing. So I'll show you guys. You'll see it on Instagram, I'm sure. Um, but uh, that's going to be my way of celebrating my birthday. Nice. Yes. So thank you guys for joining us. We have really missed out in January, but we can hope to continue on a great uh, 2018 and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.